Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is RAM and ROM chips. In this video, I'll be talking about what is RAM, what is ROM, how to draw its block diagram and the functional table. Let us begin. To start with the memory. See, you must be aware that any kind of system that is requiring some storage units, whether it is for the short term purpose or for the long term purpose and computer systems take the advantage of memory systems they have and the main memory that acts as the central storage unit in the computer and this main memory about which we are talking that is relatively large and it is very fast memory because it is used to store the programs and data during the runtime operations and the primary technology which is used for the main memory that is based on semiconductor integrated circuits. The integrated circuits for the main memory, they are classified into two categories. One is RAM, random access memory. Second is ROM, which is read-only memory. So now let us understand how to draw its block diagram and what is the functional table. To start with RAM chips, see integrated circuit RAM chips, they are again classified into two possible operating modes. First is static RAM. So static RAM, it consists of essentially some flip-flops and these flip-flops stores the binary information and this particular information it remains valid intact as long as the power is applied to the unit once the power is kept off the data will be erased second type of memory is what the dynamic memory so dynamic memory that is like being constructed or uh, this uses uh, capacitors to store the binary information and the binary information that is stored in the form of the charges. So capacitors, they are provided inside the chip by most transistors. So what happened over there? The stored charge on the capacitors, they tend to discharge with time and the capacitors must be periodically recharged. And how it is being done? By refreshing the dynamic memory. Right. So refreshing is done by cycling. Need not to uh, discuss in much detail. Now let us draw the block diagram. This is the block diagram of the RAM chip. See RAM chips, these are available in a variety of sizes and RAM chips can be used as per the system requirement. Here you can see 128 cross 8 RAM. It means it has a memory capacity of 128 words 128 words and each word is of 8 bits means 1 byte and when we are talking about the address lines so 128 is what 2 raised to the power 7 this is equal to 128 so it means it requires 7 address lines so 7 address bits it have and at the same time 8 bit data bus as you can see 128 cross 8 it has 8 bit data bus and since in case of random access memory both read and write operations can be performed means data can be read from the memory data can be write into the memory that is why it is the bidirectional so this data bus which is the 8 bit it is bidirectional and it allows the transfer of data either from the memory to CPU means during the read operation or from the CPU to memory during the write operations. And here you can see there are two chip select lines CS1 and CS2. So these two chip select control inputs they are used to for just to enable the chip only when the microprocessor selected. As you can see CS1 and CS2 bar. So CS1 this is active high chip while CS2 is active low chip. Means it must be 1 and it must be 0 for the perfect operation. And since both read and write operation can be performed so you can see 
two individual lines, one for read and one for write. In some of the cases, some common read-write operation can be performed. One simple line could be used either for the read or for the write. Here also you can see 8-bit data bus. So this data bus which is bidirectional, it is constructed by using three state buffers. Three state buffers you must be aware about means there are three states. Three states means it must be logic 1 or logic 0 or the high impedance state. Right. So these are the three states means the output generated by three state buffers can be placed in one of these possible states either active high, active low or high impedance state. You must write it completely high impedance state. Now let us understand the functional table. You can see over here in the functional table, see 7 bit address uh, lines are used, address lines will carry the address only. So we have not taken it over here, means at each and every time 7 bit address lines are required. So in this column, you can see 4 columns we have drawn for chip select 1, chip select 2, read, write. Accordingly in the next memory function and in the last state of the data, bus is being mentioned over here. As I have told you that chip select 1, CS1, this is active high, means it must be 1. CS2 is active low, it must be 0 for the perfect operation. So you can see these cases here. CS1 is high, CS2 is low, these three cases, right? So these are the only conditions where the operation will be performed, depending upon what is the situation of read and write. As you can see, read is also active high, write is also active high. It means when this will be 1, right? Then read operation will be performed and when this write will be 1 and read will be 0, means this will be active high, this will be active low, then write operation will be performed. Write means high data to RAM, input data to the RAM and read means reading the data from memory taking the data out from memory. That is the read operation. So you can see here write operation is being performed. Here read operation is being performed. When both read and write, both are active low, it means none of the operation will be performed. Inhibit situation. Similarly, when CS1, this, is, this must be active high. If this is active low, none of the operation means it will be in the high impedance state. You can see when both CS1 and CS2 are high. Again also inhibit memory function means high impedance state. So you can see out of these only the condition when CS1 is active high, CS2 is active low. When read operation is performed, it must be 1. When write operation is performed, it must be this particular line must be 1. So this is how you can explain the block diagram and the functional of functional table of RAM chips. Now let us discuss about the ROM chips. See, what is ROM? You must be aware ROM is read-only memory, right? So the primary function or the primary component, if we talk about the main memory, which is the primary uh, component, that is RAM. But a portion of memory is also constructed with the help of ROM chips, right? Actually, RAM was used uh, for both read and write operation and that is being dis differentiated, that needs to differentiate, one at a time operation will be performed. But since ROM is random access, means RAM is used for storing most of the programs, bulk of the programs and data which are subjected to change. But ROMs are used for storing programs which are required to be stored permanently in the computer or for the tables. Permanently for the computer means even if uh, like the power is being switched off, that particular program can be retrieved or can be uh, read out or can be taken into the consideration when the power is switched on. There is one more uh, term means when we are talking about the permanent storage of the data, so the ROM portion of main memory that is also required for storing initial program and that initial program is what the 
bootstrap loader see this bootstrap loader it is a program and its function is to start the computer software operating when the power is turned on as you are aware that ram is volatile means its content will be destroyed when the power is turned off turn off means the content of rom which is the read only memory it remains unchanged even if the power is turned off turned on right that is why it is required and the key function you must remember what is the key function of the bootstrap loader now let us draw its block diagram as you can see here read only means only read operation can be performed so you can see in this particular block diagram there are again two chip select pin chip select 1 and chip select 2 this is active high this is active low it must be 1 for the operation it must be 0 so when the input to chip select 1 is 1 and the chip select 2 is 0 then only this particular chip will work all right here you cannot see read line write line because it is going to perform only one operation rom chips are also available in the variety of sizes depending upon the requirements it could be uh, used right since as i told you that it can perform only read operation it means here you can see the data bus the data bus it can operate in the output mode only right here data bus is in the output mode only you can see only the outward line since you can see the size of the memory 512 into 8 512 means 2 raised to the power 9 which is equal to 512 you can see there are 9 bit address right so it has a capacity of 512 volts and the value i have told you that on the chip select it must be 1 while at the chip select 2 it must be 0 and you must remember that if we are uh, talking about the same chip size so it is possible to have more bits of rom in comparison to the ram because it has more capacity to store the data and you can you must have seen in the case of the both the block diagrams uh, in the first case the data bus was bidirectional here it's a unidirectional only so this is how you can draw the block diagram of the ram and rom chips you can explain it thank you so much for watching this video